Hey everyone, Houston Math Prep here introducing separable differential equations to you. If we have a differential equation and we can write it with all of the dependent variable expressions on one side, if we're dealing with y equals a function of x, that's what we think of as y, and all of the independent variable expressions on the other side, what we think of as the x usually, then we say that the equation is separable. That makes sense, right? The idea is I'm able to put all of one variable expression on one side, all of another variable expression on the other side. You can see we have some examples here. These are equations that are already separated. We have a dy and a dx, and we have the y's with the dy and the x's with the dx. We have y's and t's, all of the y's together, all of the t's together. Similar thing here, we have all the t's together, the only x expression by itself on one side. Here we have all the x's on one side, all of the y's on another side. Another way to spot if something is a separable first order equation, we would need to be able to write it in the form dy dx equals some function of x times some other function of y. When we're dealing with separable first order equations, we tend to prefer the dy dx notation to the y prime notation. The idea that we have some change in y and some change in x and they're related to each other by this formula, we can think of these as really separate ideas, what we call differentials. Some microscopic change in y when compared to a microscopic change in x is this formula here. This notation is going to help us better with separable equations in the way that we can actually separate these differentials and get all of the y information on one side and all of the x information on the other side. So you can see here if I divide both sides by my function of y and multiply both sides by dx, then we get dy over some function of y equals f of x dx. Once we get it to this step, we will now simply integrate both sides with respect to the appropriate variable. We'll integrate with respect to y on the left side, we'll integrate with respect to x on the right side. Now one thing we want to make sure that you remember to do is we always want to make sure that if we have some sort of rational expression, dy is always on the top, dx is always on the top, whichever side they are on. We don't ever integrate dividing by dy or dividing by dx, so it's important if you have a rational expression, some sort of fraction, that dy or dx or dt or whatever is considered to be on the top of the fraction on its particular side. Once that's true, then we'll just simply, again, integrate with respect to those variables on each side. We really, really hope that when we get to this point, if we've bothered to separate the variables, that each of these sides of the equation is actually integrable. We're actually able to compute the integral by hand. We at least hope so when we get to this step. And one last thing we'll remember is that these antiderivatives can be off from each other by at most a constant. Let's take a look at two equations that look super similar, one of them separable, the other not. Here my example, dy dx minus x equals xy squared, the other dy dx minus x equals just y squared. Both very simple looking, right? One of them separable, one not. If I were going to separate the variables for this left one here, what I would try to do is maybe get all of my x stuff on the right side. So if I add x to both sides, then I would get that dy dx is equal to x plus xy squared. And now to see if it is separable, can I make this a product of a function of x and a function of y? And if I go ahead and factor out the common x on the right side, you can see that I get x times the quantity 1 plus y squared. And so now what I've been able to do is write this as dy dx equals some function of x times some other function of y. And so I know that this is separable. Over here, if we add the x to both sides, then we get dy dx is equal to x plus y squared. And the problem once we get here is that there is no way to factor or make some type of a product of x's times y's to actually get this as a separable equation. So while these may look super similar at first glance, this one is a separable equation that we can solve, and this one we would have to use a bit more complicated method to deal with. 
So before we get into working a couple examples for you, the general outline for solving these, we will separate the variables just using basic algebra skills, making sure dy's, dx's, etc. are on the tops on their respective sides. We'll integrate both sides with respect to their variables. And then often people say if it is possible to solve for y, then we will. We're just going to go ahead and say if it's reasonable to solve for y, our dependent variable, whatever that is, it may not be y, then we will do that. How do we know what the dependent variable is? If we have expressions in the differential equation like dy dx, dy dt, dx dt, then our dependent variable is going to be the variable on top. So in dy dx, y is dependent. Here y is dependent on t, and x is dependent on t here. If we're not given these, we're given the prime notation, then we'll assume the usual, maybe that y is a function of x, y depends on x, or if it's y and t, we'll assume that y depends on t. We might have x and t, and then it's likely that x depends on t. So if we're given these in function notation, the outside variable will be the dependent variable. Our first example here, y prime equals x over y. So in this example here, I'm going to go ahead and convert this y prime notation to dy dx because we're going to want to separate our variables and it's going to be easier to do that if I have the differential notation versus the prime notation. So we'll write this as dy dx equals x over y. And now how will I get everything on its respective side? Well, if dy is on top here, I want to leave it on top, so I'm going to keep dy on this side. dx is on the bottom on this side, so I don't want dx on this side. I'm going to multiply it to the other side. So I'm going to multiply both sides by dx, and that will get rid of dx on the other side. And now I'm almost separated. I would need to get my y over with the dy, so I'm just going to go ahead and multiply both sides by y as well. So using some algebra, just multiplying things to both sides, we get y dy equals x dx, right? It has a nice ring to it. Now we can see the variables are separated, and so the next step is then to integrate with respect to these variables. So we'll integrate y with respect to y, and we'll integrate x with respect to x. Now these are easy power rules, right? So when I do the antiderivative of y dy, I get 1 half y squared plus some constant. I'll go ahead and call it c1 for now. We're going to adjust this here in a second. And then we get the same thing on the other side. I get 1 half x squared plus some constant as well. I'll just call it c2 for now. Now here's what we could do. I have a term plus a constant and a term plus a constant, we could gather our constants on one side, right? So I could subtract, let's say, c1 from both sides, and over here I would then get c2 minus c1, right? And what is c2 minus c1? Well, it's just some random constant minus some other random constant, which means it's just some constant itself, right? So what we'll go ahead and do is really just think of only having a constant on one side. When we solve separable equations, we won't actually write the c on both sides. We'll just write the c on one side, all as one constant. So I'm going to go ahead and write this as 1 half y squared equals 1 half x squared just plus some c. I'll just say plus c, okay? And you'll know that that was some constant we had over here and some constant we had over here, and we just combine them, and we don't have to write them separately. Okay, so now if it's reasonable to solve for y, we should. And I think it's pretty reasonable to solve for y here. So first I'll multiply everything by 2. So if I multiply everything by 2, then that will give me y squared is equal to x squared plus, now think about a similar thing here. A constant minus a constant was just some constant, right? So what is just some constant times 2? Well, it's just another constant, right? This is some arbitrary number. We multiply by 2, we just have double whatever that arbitrary number was, which makes it some other arbitrary number. So you could write 2c, but it's not really needed. I'm just going to keep calling that c, because it is just some constant. All right, so now we're close to solving for y. We have y squared, so if we root both sides, that will give us that y is equal to, remember, plus or minus on the other side, the square root of x squared plus my constant. And that is my general solution for this differential equation right here. And if we need to do more work with this, whether we choose the positive or the negative root will depend on do we want it to go through a positive value or do we want to go through a negative value for y. 
Let's look at our last example here, dy dx minus x equals xy squared. This is the one that we showed you was separable before, but we didn't work it all the way. So remember the first thing we did before was we added x to both sides. So let's go ahead and do that again. So dy dx equals x plus xy squared. Now working this out, remember the next thing that we did was factor out the common x so that we can get a product and separate them. So we get x times one plus y squared. And now how do I separate? Well, dy is on top on this side, so I want to keep dy on this side. That means move dx to the other side, right? So dx is going to multiply to the other side. But now this one plus y squared expression needs to be over on the y side, right? So really I need to divide this one plus y squared to the other side. So we'll get dy over one plus y squared is equal to x dx. And once we are at this point, we're now separated. So because we are separated, we can integrate both sides with respect to their variables, right? So the integral of dy over one plus y squared, you might notice that that is an inverse tangent definition. So for that one, we'll actually get the inverse tangent of y. And normally we would write plus a constant, but remember I'm going to go ahead and save both my constants and just put them together on one side. So I'll save for the other side the constant equal to the antiderivative of x dx. That's just going to be one half x squared. And now I'll go ahead and write both my constants worth on one side. So we get inverse tan of y is equal to one half x squared plus c. And is it reasonable to solve for y? Well, sure, we can just take the tangent of both sides, right? So we'll go ahead and say y is equal to the tangent of one half x squared plus some constant. And that is our general solution for dy dx minus x equals xy squared. We have another video coming up that is just more examples of separable equations and working those. We have five examples in that video. So check that out. Thanks for watching, everybody. We'll see you in that video.